correlations. Correlations is a tool with which to measure how two variables are related to each other. So the concept of correlations is to quantitatively measure the relationship or how two variables co-vary. And we measure this on a scale of minus one to one. So there are some positive numbers and negative numbers. And we'll talk about the direction, positive or negative, of the correlation coefficient in the next slide. But for now, let's talk about the strength. So zero means no relationship. And the further the number goes away from zero towards one, the stronger the relationship. So from point one to point three, we say that's low relationship. Point four to point five, we say that's moderate. And point six to point nine, we say that's high relationship, with one being a perfect relationship. Now, this is true for negative numbers. So I put the absolute sign around these numbers with those bars to indicate that this list of description is true for negative numbers as well. So the strength is to go from the low number to the high numbers to point 0.1, or from 0 to minus 1, the stronger the relationship. Now, it's also very important to understand that, although conceptually, this is what we're talking about in terms of strength, from going from 0 to 1 or from 0 to minus 1. When we have actual data, we have to take into account that it, this doesn't always work, that sometimes given a certain data, even 0.3 is considered high. So it has to be relative to the kinds of data that we're looking at. But this only just illustrates the concept of going from no relationship to low, moderate, high and perfect. So there's positive and negative direction to a correlation. So positive correlation is such that as numbers in one variable go up, the numbers in the other variable also go up. A good example would be the number of hours a child spends on homework and how that correlates or relates to the high scores on exams, so they go up together. And the inverse may also be true. The less number of hours the child spends on homework, the lower the scores may be, right? So that's an example of a positive correlation. And then the negative correlation is such that as numbers in one variable go up, the numbers in the other variable go down, or the, the inverse. So an example of that would be the number of hours a child spends on computer games at home and how that's related to the scores at the school. So the more hours spent on the computer games, the lower the scores may be. Or the inverse may be true that um, as the child's number of hours of computer games goes down, the scores may go up. So that's a negative correlation where as one goes up, the other goes down. Now, when we're interpreting correlations, we have to also understand very clearly that correlation does not mean causation. So you may have heard of that saying before, if you've taken a stat class before. So when we say the two variables X and Y are related, we don't say variable X causes variable Y, just based on correlations. We do say variable X and variable Y are related and we do not know whether X causes Y or Y causes X. So we do talk about um, Pearson correlations and uh, spearman rowan there's um, a few other types of correlations, but for the purpose of our discussion, we're going to only focus on Pearson correlation and how we go about understanding and calculating uh, the correlation coefficient. So here's between height and self-esteem. Right? So height is measured in inches, and self-esteem measured on a scale, as you can see, with the lowest one being 3.1 all the way up to 4.6. Um, so it's a smaller scale. So let's look at these numbers. If you look at them long enough, the question is, do you think these two variables are related to each other? Well. If we think about it in real life situation, do you think taller people tend to have higher self-esteem for whatever reason in our social context? So take a look at some of those high numbers in height and see if it's associated with high self-esteem. 
So we may see, uh, uh, let's pick a high number in height. Uh, there is 71. And associated with a fairly high self-esteem, 4.6. And there's 75, even a taller person. Pretty high self-esteem. And then when you look at a very low number, here, 61, that seems to be associated with a lower self-esteem. And you may actually see some exceptions as well. For example, there's 63 but the self-esteem is 4.0. So there seems to be some exceptions there, but it seems to be generally true that taller people tend to have higher self-esteem. Okay? So we would say that height and self-esteem are related, they are correlated, but we're not sure about the strength. Now, in order for height and self-esteem to be a perfect relationship, we would be able to predict one's self-esteem based on one's height, right? So we know that that's not true. And we also see at least one exception, and there may be more. So the more exceptions there are, the, the lesser uh, the relationship is, the, the less intense the relationship is. And because in, uh, in terms of direction, because we see high numbers in one, um, associated with high numbers in the other, generally speaking, would you agree then that it's a positive relationship? Now, we could stare at this data forever and contemplate whether um, the correlation is, or the relationship is high or low, or we could do maybe a scatter plot to see what the two variables look like. Now, before we do the scatter plot, I created a graph separately, one for height and one for self-esteem, just to see what the data looks like. So here we have in the first graph a histogram of height. Then you have uh, the histogram of self-esteem. Now when we put these two variables together in one graph, we see something like this. It's a scatter plot and we're looking to see where one's self-esteem is based on height. So we have in the horizontal line, height, and then uh, that's looked at by self-esteem. So where the two numbers meet, one's height and self-esteem, um, is a dot. So you have several dots here. You kind of see uh, a pattern of these dots, and the pattern looks like this, an oval shape, right? That seems to kind of contain most of the data. And you see that um, in order for there to be a perfect relationship, instead of these dots creating an oval shape, you would see a straight line, right? Where all the dots are lined up on that straight line. The further these dots go away from this line, creating this oval shape, the lower the relationship to the point where if all the dots are scattered all about, that there is really no pattern whatsoever, we would say that's a poor relationship or a very uh, weak relationship. So in this case, as I see it, um, I clearly see the oval shape as I drawn it. And so we know that there's a relationship there, something going up between the two. Now we also see this line going up or the oval shape going upward, right? And that indicates a positive relationship. So what we, see, what we see in this kind of shape where the oval shape is facing the north, so to speak, is that as we see an increase in height, we see an increase in self-esteem. Right? That's what's creating this line that's facing upward. And so we say that's a positive relationship. In the case of a negative relationship, you would see the opposite where the oval shape is facing downward. So it would look something like this, right? right? And it's facing downward. That indicates a negative relationship. So here's a big formula to calculate for Pearson correlation. Let's read through this. And once we have kind of looked at it long enough, this, um, this formula does not look impossible, right? So there is n, and n we know from a previous conversation means the sample size. And then you have the sum of, of x, y. So this is to say you want to multiply x and y for each pair and then total. Then you have the minus sign, 
and then you have the sum of x times the sum of y. Okay, so that's sum of all the x's and then sum of all the y's. And that's in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you have a square root sign over all of this that's underneath. And you can see um, there are two separate sets of brackets. In the first set, you see n, right? And then the times the sum of x's squared. So we want to total all the squared x's minus the sum of x. That's the number that you used in the numerator, squared. And then the second set of brackets is identical to the first set, except it's about the y variables, right? So n times the sum of squared y's minus the sum of y, that's the same number that was used in the numerator, squared. And you want to remember that all of this in the bottom is under a square root sign. So let's go back to this data. We know the height and the self-esteem. We looked at it, stared at it, and we think that there's a positive relationship, not a perfect one, but maybe a strong relationship or at least a moderate relationship. In order for us to do a calculation and plug in the numbers to the formula that we just looked at, we want to have all these um, columns pretty much summed up, right? So let's look at these columns. The first two are the X and the Y columns. So we just total at the very bottom and we're going to need those numbers. And then we create these three additional columns. One is the XY column where you're multiplying X by Y for each case, for each person. So X times Y for the first person is 68 times 4.1, which equals 278.8. So we do that for every person, and then we total at the bottom. And then the last two columns are the x squared and the y squared columns, where each x for each line is squared. Okay? And likewise, for the y squared column, you're squaring the y's for each person and total. So here at the bottom, you have all these totals that um, the formula requires. And of course, n is 20. There are 20 people in this data. So a summary information is listed here on the left side. And we're going to see if we can plug in the numbers right, into the formula that we read earlier. So n is 20, and then 49, 37, 06 is the sum of x, y. Okay? minus the sum of x of 13.08 and the sum of y of 75.1, all divided by the square root of, and then in the two brackets, sets of brackets, you have n of 20 times the sum of x's squared, okay, that's three or eight, five, nine, one, two, minus the sum of x squared, and I spell it out as 1308 times 1308. That's in the first set of brackets. In the second set, you have n of 20 times the sum of y's squared, okay, minus the sum, or, um, sum of y, okay, that's 75.1, squared, or times 75.1. Okay. So all the numbers are plugged in now. So at this point, it's, it's, it's a matter of calculating, right? So in the numerator, you have 20 times 49, 37.6, which becomes 98, 752, minus, then you have 1308 times 75.1, which gives you 98, 230.8. So those two numbers, the difference is 521.2, and that remains in the numerator. Now for the denominator, we calculate 20 times 85, 9, 20, 12, and then 1308 squared and subtract, which gives you 30, which gives you 7376. In the second set of brackets, you got 20 times 285.45, which becomes 5709, and then 75.1 squared. Right? Do that subtraction, that becomes 68.9 now. So now it's more met, um, manageable. You have two numbers that you want to then multiply because brackets are like parentheses, right? Parentheses means uh, to multiply. So you have this huge number that is very different from the numerator that should be a reminder that there's a square root that still needs to happen. So when you square root this gigantic number in the denominator, it becomes much more um, 
small, uh, 713.3514, okay? and similar to the numerator. You want to keep in mind that uh, the correlation cannot be more than one. So the denominator, or the number in the bottom, has to be equal to or greater than the numerator in order to get its a, an answer that's less than one. So when you do the dividing here, you get a correlation of 0.73. So what does that mean? It's a positive number, right? So we know from that that it's a positive correlation, which means that as height goes up, uh, self-esteem also goes up. But look at the strength, 0.73. Would you say that's a strong relationship? So although there were some exceptions, this is a strong relationship, at least based on this data.